Hello, guys and girls, and welcome to episode 186 of the F-Reality Podcast. This week is all about new and exciting VR hardware, with a little sprinkling of deals on some VR games. We're going to be discussing HTC teasing a new upcoming VR headset, the new HP Reverb G2 Omnicept Edition, which includes eye and mouth tracking. We've got some deals on VR games for PC and Quest, and we talk a little bit about the Oculus App Lab submission process. To round up the show, Zimmer's hopefully got some new releases for you to look forward to next week. I'm not sure. Uh, but for now, let me introduce you to the team and find out what's been their highlight of the week this week. Feel free to join in in the chat and let us know what your highlights are so we can read out some of them uh, as, as well. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, stone, I love it. <laughs> let's just set this thing on fire and just see how it goes. So, first up, this guy has a rubber fetish, and I'm talking about burning rubber. He just loves putting the pedal to the metal. It's our resident VR racing expert, is of course, Zintok5. How you doing, dude? Yeah, good, Mike. Thank you. Uh, I was worried where that one was going, but uh, you saved it. You saved it. You, you... <laughs> I'm thinking of that lovely meme of, you know, yeah, they had me in the first half or whatever that is. So, yeah, good good, good week. Um, the highlight of my week is, is a bit of an odd one. Um, so my highlight was um, playing Gorilla Tag um, mm-hmm. and checking out, uh, I can't even say checking out, and ogling at the new hats. Uh, and I say that because they, they added hats to the game as a way for people to actually pay the developer back, uh, Lemming, uh, for his lovely creation. It's there on the Steam build. It's not there on the Quest build. But my daughter and I went in to try and play the new uh, beta level that they have. There's a new, like, sand canyon level, which canyon. is all, yeah. like, canyon crevasse. Uh, bit bit of a different dynamic. We didn't realize that it was a beta. It wasn't on the headset, so we updated, excitedly updated our App Lab games, went in, just ended up playing standard Gorilla Tag after that. And uh, I got to play Gorilla Tag a little bit in an actual forest, which was fun as well. Did that uh, this weekend. Um, what, but, what, what, what did you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we went to a forest with my headset and had a play in the forest in, in, uh, how, how, in Gorilla how Tag. How immersive is that? Can you recommend this to people? It's pretty immersive. But uh, yeah. you, also, you've got like half of your brain going, what the feck are you doing, man? <laughs> my wife was like, this is totally like a faux front. Like, you're embarrassed, aren't you? And I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> this is embarrassing. I'm now imagining a grown man like bunny hopping a tree or something like that and trying to it was uh it it was an experiment i've done it a couple of times but i was like okay i've got everything i need try try this out and that was fun Uh, but yeah like you you're you're in this 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 beautiful 8k forest and then you put on the headset you go to a low poly forest that looks uglier than the real version of a forest and then you take it off again you're like wait is this real or is this fancy (laughs) like you you don't know anymore definitely tell the difference (laughs) between those two man and like (laughs) The, when I was checking out the the hats earlier, like it was, um, it's it's nice that they've got an arrangement of hats. They've got the little Moroccan bun cap with the little tassel, and oh, yeah. I can't Fez. wait to being able to yeah Fez. Thank you. That's the name of the appropriate hat. Uh, I can't wait to like pay the guy for the great times we've had and in, in, in this so far. Uh, really enjoy it. Still love Gorilla Tag. What what other hats can we adorn on our little monkeys? There's all kinds of weird ones. Um, there's a coconut, half a coconut shell just on the oh, head. Wow. That one makes you look <laughs> nice. like Dumb and Dumber. Um, you've got a, if you're one of the ladies, and my daughter's particular favorite is this blue hat with a nice blue frill fan out. Um, that's going to make uh, Nathy look absolutely lovely when he gets into Fabulous. the Fabulous, mm, yeah. Totally fab. And um, and a top hat, of course. Uh, nice Very big nice. black top hat. So. Yeah, that's. Mm. Th- I know that doesn't seem like a very high highlight, uh, no. but for me, <laughs> that was well, the highlight of my Gorilla game. Tag is awesome. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. game of the year. Yeah, very nice. Still is. Well, Nathy is all about the banana life. You know, he's always hanging out in the in the in the Twitter chats. Yeah, we have a Gorilla uh, Tag Twitter group, and I love yeah. it in there. It's beautiful. beautiful. It's amazing. Posts uh, gifs of monkeys yeah. doing yeah. their thing. Four hundred gifs. Yeah. 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 So, uh, next up. This guy got lost in a vast world beyond the horizon this week. The VR adventurer out there. So, of course, Nathy, how you doing? My PlayStation 5 has held me hostage for like a week. Yeah, same. There's no, there's no, there's no escape from it anymore. No. It's like no. when I come downstairs, it's whispering to me. Yeah. It's like, come, 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 come. And it's, it's, it, you turn it on so easily. 
you know? I think, I and think it, it pops the, the game. Module there. I'm so addicted to it now, Mike, that I have my PlayStation 5 on this resting mode. So the moment I turn it on, I can it's just keep playing. So it's it, it has been on for like a week. And what have you been playing? Tell everyone. Horizon, Zero Dawn. But I've also been playing some VR. You know? Oh yeah, okay. So, what, what VR games have you been playing? So I tried, well, one that I can't talk about. Yeah, I was waiting for you to say it. I was going to say, don't say that one. Go on. This, this we, would have we, been that one, one of those shows again. Yeah. No, I, I did not play that game. I, okay. I did not play it, it okay? Just I erase that from your memory, Men yeah. in Black style. Okay, um, next. Thank you. Um, I played Swarm. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've played Swarm as well. Yeah, yeah. what do you think? Um, <laughs> we, we oh, all we all played, played it. <laughs> is, this, is this the highlight of the show? You guys can take for that one. or no? Yeah. It's okay. Well, it wasn't my highlight either, but it is the game that I played. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's an okay game. Uh, it's, um, yeah, how can I explain? It's it's like a wave kind of shooter, but it also has some other missions bound to that. And you yeah. have to, you have two guns that are also these Spider-Man hooks that you can use to swing around and then shoot enemies. So it's kind of like flying uh swinging and, and and shooting that's kind of what it comes yeah. down to um and yeah i played a couple of missions um yeah it looks nice uh, mm -hmm. uh visually i think it's cool uh it has a story uh the music is great as well actually wait, i thought it's, it's got, it's got story? Awesome. wait 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 what, what, what wait, kind wait, of story does this what kind of story, story does this no, have? i i wasn't i wasn't so uh keen on on even you know uh, diving into that honestly <laughs> You're not going to be like, you know, dipping into lore for hours on end. Basically, a, a, a swarm of aliens That's invades Earth saying. and some, what, what is some good about Chad the story? gets yeah, what, some what uh, grappling about... hooks and goes at it. <laughs> Please. What, what, what is good about the story, at least, is I, I like the cell shaded style of it. So it's like you're watching like a cartoon book, uh, like yeah, yeah. Yeah, telling you yeah. what is happening. Uh, I like the humor in it. You know, it has like some solid humor. Uh, but uh, it's, it's a particular style of humor, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting like a lot of people are not going to dig that at all. Uh, but it's completely unnecessary for the game. Yeah, they could have just like released this uh, just without the without the story, and it would have been exactly the same well, game. I, because I, it's I like think... it's like a like a, how you say like a score hunter. You know, you yeah. go for the yeah. highest score, yeah. and you compete mostly with yourself because you know you have leaderboards, of course. Uh, but I mean. I, I don't even consider myself like even ranking on that leaderboard anywhere because if, if I, everyone else is playing that. I kind um, of put it in the same category as like Zombieland in that if you like that kind of like competing on online leaderboards yeah. against other people and you want to rank high, then it's that kind of style of game. Very arcadey, yeah. I'll put it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree on the story, but, but nowadays a lot of devs put a story in so people can't complain about that part. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it's just there. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was fun. It's not something I'm going to return to myself. It's not something I would continue playing. I, I, I didn't think there was enough variety in terms of what I could do or can really do any unlocks and stuff like that. I mean, the star was kind of nice, but then, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, it, it's just like the thing is, like, because it's the whole swinging thing, uh, it, it just like, and we're going to talk about this later about like, what when is something an App Lab game? And when is something an official game? Because this, for me, could have also been on App Lab. But this I think it's is pretty then, uh, decent. I think it's pretty yeah, okay, decent. Okay, okay. Like, but I mean, Windlands is also decent. It's very yeah, polished. Is, yeah. on there, you know? It's, it's a very polished game. Like, uh, yeah, I, yeah it, no, it is a polished if, game. But the thing is, if, if you like this kind of game, uh, which I don't think there's any of us really into this particular <laughs> yeah. style. Uh, I think Mike might even be the one who's the most competitive in terms of like, you know, trying to get like a high score. Mm. I'm not like that at all. Like yeah. I've played a, a couple of missions. I really like the swinging mechanics. I think they're done really, really well. I like that, how they do that. It makes me kind of dream about yeah. a Spider-Man VR game. Uh, but for me personally, I think the price of, I think it's $25. Um, I would never pay that for a game like this, but I can imagine, like again, that for a, a large group of people that really enjoy this yeah. particular style, that this is a great game. Yeah, yeah. for me, That's I like true. the swinging mechanics. Not for me, though. It, it reminded me back of like the Winlands days. You know, yeah, I loved exactly. I love Winlands. Yeah. Uh, but that was like a more story driven adventure. So that's kind of probably yeah. why it appealed to me more. But you know, I think the art style, the music, the mechanics, all yeah. pretty well executed. So Polish. if you like this kind of style of yeah. game, arcade shoot 'em up, online leaderboard ranking games, you'll probably really dig this. But yeah, yeah and, and, I think and, and, like you and, guys it's it's a great game for quest users you know yeah. uh like i'm talking you know from my own experience of someone who played games for like five six or how long i've been in the vr industry i don't even know anymore 
Yeah. Um, so for me, it's like this is not blowing my mind, basically. And I'm right now. I'm more in a in a search for something that is really going to a bit deeper. Yeah. You know, and and that's also one of the reasons why I've been playing Horizon Zero Dawn because yeah. there isn't much that really draws me into VR right now, title wise. But again, I'm someone who has played so much. If I was someone who just bought my Quest, yeah, yeah you're gonna have blast. the shit. Yeah, of you know what I mean? Yeah, of so. Yeah, and I think you, you've got to understand it from our perspective, having well, been that's in the for, for a long, long time. Yeah. 84 years, it seems. 84 years. We, we do hit these dry spells on occasion, and like they're yeah. not a death knell. It's just it's the natural cadence of content yeah. release, whether that's yeah. hardware or software. Like You do hit these times where you're like, oh, I feel like I've kind of played everything I'm into, and, uh, and then you just kind of wait for the next thing to hook you. So. But I totally understand Nathie's point of view, you know, going into a game, especially like Horizon, that's very deep, got a lot of lore to it, got a lot of story, it's going to be a very long game, it's got a lot of different mechanics in that game as well, it's a game that you can really sink your teeth into, whereas we don't quite get that in VR right now, I, you know, I we've had some stellar either. titles in the past, but just not right now. No, it's that it's more content. right now, and that, that has also been something from last year, is that Quest is more party focused, PC VR is more about the bigger adventures although we have to wait a long time for something to you know come up that is really on that level mm -hmm. so yeah but, I mean, like it's fast, just, uh, fast food content yeah one, it's more quick quick and easy content yeah one 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 place that i turn to when i think that there's like a dry spell on and there isn't enough content that's rich places like um rec room and vr chat have some great creations that, that happen yeah. in there and like mm -hmm. whenever i'm thinking like the stores i'm scraping them Oftentimes, like the indie dev scene uh, can feed that. And I'm talking about story. I'm talking about stuff that is yeah. a little bit richer, you know, um, but but obviously not double or triple A. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 yeah, and uh, talking about VR chat, they've got like a car that you can jump in and drive now in there, like, like properly, they've got like a Mustang that you can oh, yeah. jump into a world. You can actually sit in the driver's seat. You can steer and push the pedals. Yeah, with, with full body mm. tracking, which is pretty badass. So that's pretty fun. Wow. Um, but yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Next up, this guy was famously seen playing uh, Pong with his mind this week. He's uh, <laughs> best mates with Elon Musk. He's, a, he's our own adorable little monkey. It's, uh, it's Rowdy VL. How you doing? <laughs> Are you now literally comparing me to a monkey, Mike? Is that, is that yeah. how far it is? <laughs> yeah. with, your, with your little banana smoothie pipe. Yeah, yeah. Rowdy, what would you wear if you were a monkey? What, what would I? Uh, the on, gorilla, on your head. Uh, the gorilla coconut hat, of course. Okay. Oh, the coconut one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah nice. That's the one I go for. <laughs> this is such <laughs> a weird podcast. So, also, 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 when you, also when you go to work, by the way? You know, you well, I work from home, so I mean, I barely ah, okay, wear okay, pants yeah. nowadays. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, okay. The, the hat can go as well. Okay. Uh, no, I think uh, I think the the highlight that I had this week was the same as uh, as Nate's as well. I think that's the only VR game that I really got to check out this week. Um, again, not really my kind of thing, uh, but I, I get that people are are enthusiastic about this. Um, I think that the thing that I would like to highlight the most about this game is like if 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 you haven't tried it, at least try the swinging. I, I really like the the swinging mechanic. Uh, it's of course in a limited kind of bubble that you do it, mm. so it's not really uh, not really something that is like. Uh, it's not open what? world. It's like an yeah. in a little arena. Yeah. Oh yeah. right, right. I was I was like, what do you mean by bubble? So you mean you're just you're you're in, you're a, in a in an aquarium. And yeah, you you're in a, okay. the walls as well. Yeah. yeah. And that was one of the thing so, about things about Windlands was it gave you that amazing sense of freedom yeah. because when you were just going on a really long run through the forest and swinging from tree to tree, it, it gave you that amazing sense of momentum. Um, whereas like yeah, with this game, you're in a little sealed mm -hmm. arena. Yeah. That's the kind. And, of, and, and also, scale like, with, with the guardians. You know when the guardians True. like they would True. like stand mm -hmm. up and be this yeah. behemoth that's like and, looking down on you and you feel like a little, multiplayer little mouse together well the multiplayer together. was amazing oh, in Lands yeah. too that's yeah. that's, Swing that's together in multiplayer swingers <laughs> <Yeah>. party <laughs> But anyway, I, like I, there was one thing I, I wanted to to uh, to mention about this, and I don't know. I mean, I've only done a couple of levels, but I notice always that, you know, the floor is always water. Like so, if you fall, it's always in the water. The sharks. I was wondering, yeah, and with the, with the sharks. But I was wondering if that changes at a certain point that, because I don't, I didn't really get the feeling of vertigo uh, from being so high above the water. Uh, yeah, you're I do right. think I would have that more when I have like you know land and I'm going to fall to to land. So wait, I don't wait, know wait, 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 wait. Hang on, hang on. You, you you have a, you have a scientific brain, Rowdy. How can you be thousands of feet or hundreds of feet above water and not realize the impact would be equivalent to hitting the ground at that at that height? 
Nice. Oh, it, it would it would be a cool. What a ninja. sick burn oh, there! Oh, wow. Take that. You just fried his scientific mind. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not disagreeing <laughs> with that. <laughs> That's fair enough. I just so, didn't I just didn't oh. feel the the vertical effect that much yeah. because you you I don't know like it, it doesn't it doesn't give that feeling of scale as much. What if it was very nice to see that added? What if it was water beds? What if it was a landscape of just water beds? Would it have the same effect, or do you oh, think that would be enough probably, for your brain? Yeah, yeah, what if definitely. it would be that that, that bit be. that you see in Star Wars with Jabba the Hutt where they uh, oh, no, try no, to no, Sarlacc, like the Sarlacc pit? No. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, 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 yeah. Sweet. <laughs> oh, why have we be able to do that? Oh man, that we can just touch right? Jabba's belly in VR. Anyway, we're getting wow. off topic. So. Uh, so sure. yeah, I, I, so let's let's see what the the chat have been up to. They've been playing Swarm. Have they been playing anything else? Yeah, they have been also playing a lot of a Swarm. Uh, okay. We have Zach Munro who played some Pavlov. Doesn't say it was on Quest. The Quest mm. one is doing really really well. I think mm. they had twenty five k players the first day when it was available wow. on App Lab. Yeah. People have that's been waiting awesome. for it for a long long time. Yeah, and hopefully awesome. it will also then go to the official uh, store. Such a um, fantastic game. Yes, and then we have Blam Crutch, who has been playing Cookout, a sandwich tail multiplayer. Yeah. Good family fun. It is. Yeah. Are we, we did we play it together? Yeah, we did. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. We had to feed the wolves. I, I'm not. I'm not very good at multitasking. It's very complicated <laughs> stuff like that. But it's fun. It's fun, definitely. The chaos is like the thing you know that makes it great. Um, and then we have Welsh. Sashi, who has been playing Swarm, uh, Phasmophobia, and Hyperdash this week. Mm -hmm. uh, nice. And then he says uh, that Swarm is a ton of fun and highly addictive. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I think it will appeal to some people. Some people love yeah. it. Yeah. You're, if you're no, one I of the it. oldie uh, coin op folks, then it'll yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. That's arcade shooter. Yeah, sh shoot up. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I played Swarm as well. Uh, I also played Hand Physics Lab because ah. it's now uh, officially released. Um, the cool thing about it is, like previously from uh, SideQuest, it was more of like a sandbox kind of mode. Mm -hmm. You just dip in and out of little experiences where they've kind of really gamified it. So you've got um, levels where you can kind of blitz through and they give yeah. you a star rating based on how fast you can get through it. Uh, I still think it's one of the most impressive hand uh, tracking uh, experiences yeah. you can try right now. You know, you've and kind of got this like... That you that you just like, if you want to show people what VR is about, you throw it in oh, there. Oh, yeah, it's so and great for that. So amazing. It'll blow their minds. You use yeah. Their hands. Yeah, like, don't That's go so in fantastic. thinking you're going to get, like, sucked into some, like, rich, deep yeah. experience. Like, it's a it's a fun bunch of puzzles, but you probably won't play yeah. them again. But like Rowdy said, it's, like, the perfect mm -hmm. uh, experience to put newcomers in and just show them, like, the wonder of hand tracking. Yeah, because it is still incredible that that Magical. works uh, yeah. so well with Quest. And it's not really a feature of any other headset unless you buy additional no. accessories you, or uh, you buy a Pimax, for example. Did you Sorry. paint your uh, your eggs? I painted my eggs, yeah, that was great fun. Um, <laughs> but what I really like about it is if you look down, you see your proper arms, right? Where you see the bones through the yeah, arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can turn those on. <laughs> no, arms. Wait, yes. explain this to me. Like, you, you painted your eggs. Uh, Mike, what? <laughs> yeah, so, so if you're not familiar with the hand physics lab, there's like uh, a little part of it where you have to like finger paint eggs. Um, and you can kind of like, the really cool thing is, is you can scoop them up, put them in a bowl, and you can actually roll them with your palm to paint the whole thing. It's so satisfying. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to lie. I spent so way funny. too much time doing that. This kind of conversation to uh, a, a platform like Hardcore Gamer for the last 20 years would, would listen to this and be like, uh, VR is dumb, right? They would just like, yeah. would, but you do it. And I totally get it, Mike. I totally get it. Those, yeah. those, those little nuancey interactions that you have in VR, the most mundane things are amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It's new. Yeah. I remember getting why like, infatuated. Why don't more like games uh, use like, you know, even on the Oculus touch controllers, like use that kind of, you know, mm. more interaction because it makes the game so much more extra. Because you know? I'll tell you why, because of the uncanny valley effect of, of that hand interaction. You mm. have to, there's a lot of work goes into that. I was given feedback yeah. to the Cubism dev on his mechanism for hand tracking. And I was like, as much as I think it's a really cool concept to be able to pick up these blocks and orient them and all that, honestly, for me, like the feeling, even though he's gone through alpha, beta, this is the kind of official release, the feeling of picking those blocks up and putting them together, when you're already frustrated by a, a tough puzzle, puzzle yeah. the mm. little pincers with just the triggers is so much smoother to do. Yeah, and I love the hand not... tracking stuff, but the hand mm. tracking 
we're not there yet. It's kind of like when Apple went through, I think it was the face tracking on like the iPhone and Android did the same thing, where it's like, if it's only unlocking your face eight out of 10 times, it's not good enough. No, no, no. Right? It's, it's got to be like 99%. Otherwise, you're just pissed off with it. And that's where I am right now with hand tracking. Yeah, and I only think that between maybe Elixir and the hand tracking one that you've just done, Mike, um, yeah. those two really do stand out as having... Maybe yeah. not nailed it 100%, but enough that no, like it's the, convincing. The, the thing is, if you use hand tracking right now, you still need the patience to do it. If the patience is gone, it's gonna it's gonna go through the roof. And I think with the hand physics lab is that they've put a lot of time and effort into like bridging the gaps where the, 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 yeah. The, the yeah compensating for, compensating. for the lack of like 100%. But, it, but I tracking. rarely see people uh, like saying, "Hey, the first experience was a hand tracking one." We still see people well using Richie's blank experience. Most of the time, it goes completely wrong, but um, you know, it, I, it's I not like the the great, first though, pick. Because it gives that feeling of vertigo. Yeah, know, as long as you don't push your someone. Environment. Yeah. 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 Okay. Or have <laughs> jump at a wall. I, I didn't mean like uh, hand tracking in, in regular games, but I meant uh, the uh, the hand representation uh, mm. of like the Oculus touch controls. Oh right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. To touch yeah, sensors yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah I got what you meant. But the hand tracking is part of the onboarding process now with. Oculus, and then when you when you set it up, it t it talks you through it, right, and shows you it. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, and first steps also works with it. Yeah, so. yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah, and that's on an App Lab as well. We'll be talking more about App Lab later. Yeah. Um, but let's. Uh, the other thing I've gotten into, which is stupid, like you, is like Outriders on PS5. Mm -hmm. If anyone else yeah. is playing Outriders, shout out to you. It's a stupidly addictive game. If you <laughs> don't have enough time in your life to commit to a game, don't even start playing it. It's like gamified crack. Um, but anyway, moving on, let's get into some VR news then. And the first bit of news comes from HTC this week as they teased a new image on Twitter and they stated, now the accessories are out of the way, let's get down to business. And this was tweeted alongside an image of what looks like the corner of a VR headset with an inside out tracking camera. So previously we had the teasers with the facial trackers and the Vive Tracker 3.0. Now it looks like we're actually finally gonna get some information about the new headset that they've been working on uh, for a little while. Uh, yeah. It, it could also be a case for the like, accessories. Well, they have they, <laughs> they have confirmed that it is a VR headset because oh, on the okay. HTC Vive right. blog, uh, they went a little bit further, posted a picture saying a VR headset confirmed, and they've got an image of like what looks like the shape of a headset underneath a black cloth uh, right. on a table. But so it's not just... it's not the it's not a case in the form of a VR headset because the thing <laughs> is, Vive has been selling. HTC Vive cases that look like the front of the original Vive, and you could put your headset. There's no in. way. There's no way. There's no way. This is a headset. It would be the because, troll okay. of the century. Because it would be this, a big this, troll. this coincides with what we talked yeah, about yeah. a few weeks back, uh, sure. because the president of HTC uh, Vive in China, yeah. Alvin Graylin, <laughs> he kicked it uh, off. He did confirm that their next generation standalone headset will be coming soon in an interview with a YouTube channel called Teleport Me. And he said that it will be an all-in-one headset, although quickly stated in that interview that it wouldn't position itself as a Quest competitor. And uh, alongside this tweet saying, let's get down to business, it all kind of points in the yeah. direction that this is going to be a business and enterprise-focused standalone VR headset. Mm -hmm. So uh, it could be for pr prosumers as well, you know, the high-end consumers. That, it's it's but, classic, classic. Like HTC says it's know. enterprise, but sells it to consumers anyways. Yeah. It's yeah, always they did the that same with the Vive story. Pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm it could curious, be the case. What What do you guys think then? What is What is this corner? Is this just a, an odd angle of the headset that we're seeing, like like a one of the corner cameras for yeah. inside out tracking? Inside out is tracking cameras. Yeah. Tracking, yeah. If yeah. If you If you compare the photo with the Vive Focus that is already out there, you can see a very large resemblance of the okay. the side and then the camera that is on the side of the. Like, yeah. The funny thing for me is the profile of that image. It's the only other thing on in 2021 to me that it looks it looks honestly like the top edge of a PS5, and they've just added a camera. And, and <laughs> so there's now a black PS5 with a camera, and Vive have slapped their name on it. And then there you go. Well, That's my my prediction. Well, I have a couple of questions though. Like, like first of all, I'm I'm, I'm wondering, and what kind of price category are they aiming at? Because the you know the the market position of Five the past like year and a half has changed so much from like being like almost mm. like an industry leader to like almost completely falling off the board. So I I'm wondering like, are they still going for that, you know, high end, high price module? Yes. Or are they saying like, oh no, you know what? We, uh, we're we gonna try and compete with the Oculus Quest by 
delivering them all because if they go for that no. high end high price they also need to give that you know that high end experience they need to if, if you if you just make a you know it's the same kind of features as the oculus quest uh, i um, don't i don't know if that's there, the, if that's the way to go there there's nothing wrong with a high price it's just that the, with the vive cosmos it was a high price but the headset wasn't great and it just like didn't track well it wasn't compatible with most of the vive port high, uh, software and stuff like that so there's nothing wrong with the price it's just they need to now redeem themselves and make something proper because they can't pull off another Cosmos trick here. You I know? don't know about that because you, you back then when the HC5 released and they were really like, you know, going for that high end experience, they were the one with the, you know, zero latency and the laser tracking and the ones you if you wanted the best experience back then. You had an HC Vive. That You've was also how, got to remember that, that, position. that the, the, they were also helped out by Valve with the the design yeah, and, yeah. and build of the yeah, original Vive. Exactly. They made something yeah. themselves. Yeah, yeah. true. Uh, but so I'm I wondering think... what they're going to do now with that. Well, yeah, the, well, the thing is, like, don't underestimate the like the enterprise has, a, has deep pockets. So for them, like, let's say if it's going to be 450 or 500 in, in dollars, it's not going to be a, a big uh, problem to them. Or higher if they're going to add eye track and everything, it's going to be more expensive, of course. Um, but even like, if if you look at the the enterprise market, there are a lot of people who use a Cosmos. You you see them pop up everywhere. So they did get uh, bought by a lot of uh, uh, companies. It's just that they also introduced that one as a consumer headset, and that was a mistake mm. because consumers they want the best tracking, things like that. Enterprise, a lot of those companies have no knowledge about what is good tracking and stuff. They just use it and have no idea. I don't know. I think I think from business it, they do they it do depends. demand the best. Yeah. But they did. Yeah. They did obviously uh, offer the elite, which is you know using Steam yeah, tracking. Yeah, that but, one is fine. Yeah, but there's also you because know. it's a service contract, right? It's not you don't just buy the headset, but you buy the service, like the guarantee, mm. the warranty, the service. Yeah, the support. Uh, support. Like, like, if, if you think about it, there isn't that many options in terms of standalone headsets for the business sector. Like if you're if you're a business and you're looking for standalone devices that you want to you know deploy in the field rather than yeah. be stuck in offices t attached to PCs, True. there's not really much choice. And I think you know businesses might not want to sign up for like whatever uh, business plan at Facebook have because I think they, they put a premium on the headsets um, I think they are about $800 if you don't require a Facebook login for a business use yeah. so maybe although this might release as like an $800 standalone VR headset it still may be competing yeah. with Quest in its own market which is the enterprise market plus, yeah. plus the thing is like the for example you have the Pico Neo right and you have a yep. few others but for example Pico Neo in an arcade wouldn't work it's not built for that and and like HTC is also more focused on the you know the arcade business. Mm -hmm. So it could be that this one is also it is a gamer headset, but it's made for those you know large scale places where people can you know uh, uh, battle. Uh, it against each other yeah i think my biggest so, hope is that yeah. it will be like an enterprise headset focused at the business market but hopefully it has that kind of prosumer element to it as well a bit like the vive pro that it still appealed to like the kind of like uh, gamers with deep pockets that wanted like the best possible hardware available on the market at that time and especially if you're well, one of those people they, that well, wants to avoid facebook logins yeah. then yeah. if they have a library of content to back it up in, for the standalone in, device then it could be a viable option for some people yeah because i'm interested in that in that uh, what you just said, Mike, because what, what would you consider uh, a feature worth adding that a prosumer would say, yes, that's and no, that's no Facebook, no Facebook well, account. Well, yeah, that's one uh, that, that some people okay. like vocal people in the community would be happy about. Mm -hmm. If it's just got a faster processor, slightly higher resolution display, I think that's enough, you know, just to content warrant. yeah, is another one. But you know, if, if, I, if they bring if they bring over some sort of like Vive port library for standalone, yeah. you know, get some devs on board. Yeah. It could be viable that consumers do buy it as a consumer headset as well. But of well, course, which this is all speculation. Is, yeah, it's not um, the price actually. Point, so for me, is. if I if I was buying a fleet of let's say two hundred headsets, the per unit price wouldn't be my number one driving point. It would be something that I saw very well demonstrated on the last Oculus Connect, and I do mean that OC six is a software stack to manage the headsets. So if I have those 200 headsets, I want to know what their battery charge is at. I want to know centrally how I can name label those devices, carve them up to different departments, serialize them and, and track the numbers in one place so I can keep track of the hardware. I think if HTC really wants to be serious from a, you know, from a, a prosumer perspective, they have to come in not just with a new headset that's at a decent price, it needs it needs to have the software stack behind it. That that would be my number one 
uh, differentiating factor. From what I understand, those kind of features that you just talked about, Zim, have been introduced into Oculus Quest now. Um, I, I know like Bertie from Virtual Umbrella does a lot of tweeting about like the kind of behind the scenes of like uh, VR events where he has to run numerous VR yeah. headsets. And I think he yeah. has said recently that that situation has improved for him so i know that was a big complaint because like if you want to show off like uh you know a vr 360 video for example simultaneously to like a dozen headsets at once yeah, yeah. yeah. prior to this updated software i think that was a bit of a, a difficult task yeah and, and and another thing again you know in china you can't have facebook so That's where right. it's going to yeah. sell straight away because there aren't any options in that sense uh um, yeah I don't know. Again, as you said, I, I think they're going to go for a consumer flavor over it, prosumer flavor, as they always did, even with the Vive Pro. I just hope they're not going full marketing in a way where every consumer thinks they should be buying this, mm -hmm. because that's their mistake that they make every time that they put trailers out where it's saying, hey, you can uh, play this game, you can play that game. Well, mm -hmm. it's for enterprise. You know what I mean? And please, uh, please. No turntables this time. No turntables. No. no. no turntables. It's certainly, the, 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 certainly like the, the thing is the main question is not content and stuff like that's almost like a second question. It's like can HTC actually build hardware or not? Because we still don't know. Maybe the Cosmos was just an unlucky mistake. Could be. But this next one, <laughs> if they do another, if, if it flops like the Cosmos, that's it. Then the consumer at least is not is not gonna buy mm. it anymore. You you can't pull it off. But certainly from from like the tweets and stuff it is stirring up the kind of consumer market, you know, like the kind of yeah. VR enthusiast yeah. market. Because anyway. they're constantly Strange. they're they're constantly tweeting consumer stuff. The enterprise isn't on their Twitter. They should be posting this on LinkedIn and some other places. And mm -hmm. if they do post it on Twitter, don't be like this kind of hype it up like, oh, let's go to business. Just say business. This business has a dumb. Don't try it because now everyone who's hype, most of the people is going to be not, disappointed. Yeah. yeah, and are not enterprise. So yeah. you're you're putting your own expectations in the way. So yeah, yeah. fair enough. So we'll we'll have to wait and see. You know, uh, hopefully we find out during uh, this next week, and we can talk about it maybe uh, yeah. in the future on a show. Uh, but yeah, that's the tease for now. We'll see what happens next. Yeah, we'll see. But yeah. business is likely. No. Uh, so next up, <laughs> let's talk about HTC, another business focus what? headset. Welcome to your business VR podcast. Um, oh but yeah, this is a, this is the HP Reverb G2, uh, which has been like a, it's got a revision of it uh, called the Omnicept Edition. We talked about this a long time ago because this got leaked um, a while back. Uh, but this has just been uh, available now uh, to buy if you're interested in this headset. But again, very sort of business and enterprise focused. Uh, it's very uh, similar to the original Reverb G2 in that it's a Windows mixed reality headset using the Windows MR platform. Mm. It has a 2160 by 2160 resolution per eye running at 90 hertz. It's got inside out tracking using four external cameras and the excellent over ear headphones that we know and love from the Valve Index. Mm. The additional features that are unique to the Omnicept edition over the standard HP Reverb G2 are that it has built-in eye tracking uh, and like I got to try out with the Vario just recently that can be used for uh, data capture you know that kind of um, looking at shelves for market research th seeing what products stand out on the shelves and stuff like that uh, it can also be used for foveated rendering which is quite interesting we've talked about that a lot on the show before mm. where it uses eye tracking to render the pixels that your eyes are looking at at the highest possible clarity resolution that the display is capable of. And then the edges are kind of like at a less lower quality. Um, so Do it, you, you know, know what, kind of, um, what kind of latency that they managed to achieve with that? We don't know. We don't know. This th this isn't out in the wild just yet, uh, so no. we don't know. Uh, but they do state that it requires an NVIDIA Quadro, uh, which is like an enterprise focus card, or wow. an RTX uh, card. So if you've mm. got a higher-end RTX card, you could take advantage of it. Whether or not um, it really gives you that, what I want to know is the metric of performance increase that it, you can leverage. Exactly. Because, although I'll get onto the price later, this is a feature that's specifically sim racers and flight enthusiasts you know that are running like microsoft flight simulator for example and struggling yeah. like i did they've been looking for a headset that has foveated rendering to kind of get that extra performance out of a headset but uh yeah we'll have to wait and see until someone gets their hands on it until we actually know uh, alongside eye tracking it's also got built-in mouth tracking which is done by a small unit that hangs below mm. the headset similar to the vive facial tracker that I we like. talked about on I previous like. shows yeah. kind of nice um, interestingly, it's also got a built-in heart rate sensor, which is located on the padding of the headset where your forehead goes. So hmm. think about the space uh, above your above your uh, eyes in the middle. 
Apparently so. Apparently so. That's where it's located. I don't know how comfortable that's going to be. But... This is not going to make you run naked through the woods? Well, <laughs> it's going to fry your brain. Uh, I, I hope not. Uh, but it's interesting. I've never seen a headset with a heart rate sensor in the middle of your forehead. So yeah, that's interesting. Unique, I've never heard of that. Unique feature. Um, but I think what they're trying to do is with this business headset is use it for training applications. Like if you think for like, we talked about uh, police training applications in the past. And if you think about putting police officers through stressful training situations where they have to take a, a critical shot, for example, they can then monitor your heart rate, what, what you are focused on at the time, were you being distracted by anything in your peripheral vision, uh, you know, what impact that had on your, your mouth movements as well, for example, they can capture all that data. So it's quite a unique headset in that sense that it's got these kind of unique features. Um, it looks very sleek as well. Yeah, the you know, it, the, very... it was a light headset as well. The Reverb G2 was a very yeah. light and comfortable headset. Yeah. Um, but they've actually tweaked the head strap very slightly. They've uh, added mm. an adjustment wheel at the back, so you can tighten it and loosen it a bit like the Vive, uh, not the Vive, the Valve Index. Mm. Um, and they've kind of got rid of the uh, the Velcro straps, which were very similar to the Oculus Rift CV1, which were on the Reverb G2. Um, the Omnicept Edition will be available to purchase in May this year, and the price tag wait for it, is 1,249 US dollars, which is mm. twice the price of a standard Reverb G2. But like I said, it's got a unique feature set that might appeal to those business and enterprise applications out there that really want to sort of mess around with training. Um, with and these and again, headsets. I guess that price is a, that's a service contract, right? That's not just a headset, but you Ooh, get like... That's a very good question. I think there's a service contract on top of this. Exactly. Um, okay. But... HP are kind of one of the unique manufacturers that also obviously manufacture a, uh, PC hardware. And they've got like a, a PC backpack that is designed purely yeah. for VR applications, arcades, uh, and training. So this is kind of a headset that can double up with that product. So, you know, for for training applications where you want to run through a warehouse and run a, like a police simulation training exercise, mm, yeah, yeah, then yeah. that kind of bundle together is quite a unique offering that we don't see from other manufacturers on the market. So yeah. they are kind of setting themselves apart with this product, so uh, for, which is interesting. So for three grand, I can physically run across Skyrim. That's all I'm hearing. Well, yeah. Yes. If you yes. want to. But they make do hardware, it. so so show me in a video. That, I would watch that. That game looks so good in that headset. Like G2 is amazing with that with that panel and everything. It's just but the thing is for the price like like it's it's solid company you know what they make is yeah. great the, the specs make sense they know what they're doing their support is is awesome so it's 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 if you're a company you want to bet on uh you know hardware this is not a bad bet at all yeah but and like i said before when i was talking about the vario a lot of people were complaining about the price you know for for enterprise <laughs> you know it's nothing really 6k is nothing and this is cheap for them as well especially for, for what it offers uh, because mm -hmm. training uh, simulations again going back to the kind of police example it's very costly and and also it's very difficult to put someone in a stressful situation when they know it's not necessarily real mm -hmm. whereas this could make that situation feel a bit more realistic a bit more stressful so <laughs> Yeah, I think it's it's great what they can offer. Something yeah. unique here. Yeah, yeah. it's mm. it's an interesting uh, place. Uh, I mean, yeah. a, a double the price with those add-ons. I don't think the price is um, unjustified. I think it's a mm. justified price. The only concern that I have with HP um, when they launched the G2, they really weren't able to ship it um, to consumers' expectations. And I don't know how that's maybe cleared up. If anyone's tried, for example, to buy a G2 in the last month or two, mm -hmm. I'd love to know how quickly you got it because previously it was taking people multiple months, months to get yeah. their headset. Yeah, they, they, they definitely had some starting problems, but I think later on they were able to iron it out. I haven't heard many people say like, hey, where's my refurb? And I have to wait for it for so long. That's but, not what uh, I was, yeah. like even on Reddit, like three, four months after launch, they were mm. still experiencing okay. problems well, earlier Especially this year. now, I would be interested to see if yeah. they can, you know, uh, produce them at a fast enough rate. But I do yeah. agree with you. For that price, they should have included a free printer. <laughs> free printer. <laughs> Right, nice one. Um, so let's move on then. Uh, third bit of hardware this week. This is the Pico Neo 3. Wait, is this a hardware podcast? It is now. It's, it's it is all today. about hardware. Well, we're getting into software later. Oh, but okay. Hardware for now. Okay. Um, this is a headset that is uh, it's launching today. Well, announcing today, in oh. fact, in oh. China at an event. Um, so if you're interested in this and the Chinese market, it's launching uh, today. I don't know where you, you're going to find this like in launch China. event. Um, 
but you know if you speak chinese then you'll find it <laughs> um, we don't know anything about specs uh, other than that it looks uh, smaller than the predecessors the pico neo one and two if you're not familiar with those headsets uh, this one will have four inside out tracking cameras uh, similar to the layout of the oculus quest 2. it also has an inverted tracking ring on the controllers which also look very similar to the current oculus touch controllers yep. um, the thing with pico is uh, and nathy kind of touched on this earlier is that they're well established in like the asian markets uh, not so much over here in the west uh, as we know quest 2 can't be really sold in China. Um, but the thing that Pico has is that they have an established store of content. So yeah. they could be trying to replicate some of the success that Quest 2 has seen in the Western market and try and bring it over to uh, the, the yeah. Asian market yeah. over there. It's, 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 one of the, it's one of the first standalone headsets that actually has some developers behind it that do produce content for it, you know? Yep. So that it's interesting that it also has an ecosystem. Like we, we yep. see a lot of standalone headsets get announced, but the question is, Will they have an ecosystem? And this one in particular does already have an ecosystem. And this actually bodes an interesting question. We saw with um, with the Oculus Go that um, Oculus had tried to push into that market with a, with a, a shadow version of the headset available. They haven't Xiaomi. done that yeah. with Quest. Um, mm -hmm. And I wonder why. Did they end up with a brick wall? Did the regulator come after them? I haven't heard anything it was, about that. It was that. the Facebook integration that was the problem because uh, China banned Facebook. So um, uh, that's a no go. If, you, if your headset requires a Facebook login, then it's uh, it's a no go. So also on, on 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 a bigger scale, the Chinese government working with Facebook doesn't sound like a great uh, uh, you know title in an article. <laughs> So yeah, we, we won't see the, the Quest uh, over there, but this looks like a headset that could, could at least compete with it in its own market, and it's got its own store of content, so it's it's off to a good start. Yeah. Um, unlikely we'll see these headed over here. Um, I doubt it. They've not been particularly uh, popular headsets over here in the West. No. Uh, the but Pico the, the headsets. Pico, uh, like the, the original one and the two uh, were getting sold here. Um, yeah. So it could and be that what it's I understand, coming. They were pretty decent well, uh, yeah. in terms yeah. of specs. Yeah. What, what I often see is that like, you know, there's like third party manufacturers for hardware that they typically use like the Pico Neo as well for like, you know, developing their kind of thing. So I'm wondering if there's like some some well, kind it, of like cooperation there or like some kind of yeah, yeah. open source well there, it, is, it is because like last week uh or the week before that i was uh, talking about you know those haptic the gloves, sense gloves. Sense, yeah, yeah. Exactly. uh with facebook they had to uh kind of work around it well with the pico they could just use its full potential mm -hmm. so yeah yeah totally yeah uh, but yeah, as soon as we have any information, uh, more information about the Pico Neo 3, its specs, where it kind of sits, if we're going to see it over here or not, we'll obviously keep you updated. Uh, but yeah, it's interesting to see more hardware popping up anyway. So that's the third bit of hardware news uh, we had this week. Now let's get into some software. If you've been waiting for some juicy games to play, then uh, I've got some uh, good news for you. Because now, right now, uh, if you're looking for some classic VR games on the cheap, then you might be interested in checking out the latest VR deal from Humble Bundle. The Spring into VR Bundle is available for the next 11 days. And if you pay over 10 British pounds and 80 pence or 15 US dollars, you can bag the following PC VR games uh, from this bundle. So the bundle includes Job Simulator, Sorrento, Borderlands 2 VR, Star Trek Bridge Crew, Surgeon Simulator, Swords of Garar, Espire 1 and Detached. Okay. So uh, pretty detached. decent Isn't that, that like, like really intense... VR game? So detached. detached is the only VR. game that I wouldn't recommend That's playing on this whole list. A dangerous one. It is. It's like Motion Sickness Simulator yeah, exactly. 2019. Yeah, um, yeah because... even for me, it, it triggered me. It's it's yeah. the fact that you have... Imagine if it triggers Zim. Uh, unre then, unrelent yeah. I have a pretty strong stomach. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. you have unrelenting <laughs> six degrees of freedom movement where you just like... You, in you start zero to gravity. You, in zero yeah. gravity. You start to spin on an axis and you propel yourself with your jets or whatever, and then you spin a little bit more, and that little kick that you gave, it just, you've got six degrees of yeah. rotation going on, and the rest, it, it is... The rest is maddening. awesome. The rest is awesome. Yeah. I still yeah. liked it. I games. still liked it, but it is it is sickening. What was the co-op game that me and you played? Oh, Nathan, I know that was what very you mean. similar. Spiral, spiral something. Yeah. Uh, oh, downward yeah. spiral. Di downward, downward spiral. spiral. I don't know that what happened That was a cool game. Again. That was a cool game. Okay. Uh, anyway, so that's not included in the bundle. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Um, but yeah, pretty decent price for a selection of games, especially if you missed out on them first time around. Um, it's also, if you don't 
uh, want to get that bundle uh, specifically that are tied to those specific games, they are running a sale at the moment with loads of other VR games with heavy discounts, okay. um, such as Super Hot, Red Matter, uh, and also a classic, Batman Arkham VR, just mm. three wow. British pounds or five nice. US dollars. Oh, definitely Not worth it. That's yeah. a that's a must buy at that price. Yeah, sure. And quite dated experience, but very cool moments in there. Um, yeah, it's just Batman that you're not going to fight as Batman, okay? It's more about puzzling investigation. As Batman. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, investigation. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you're interested okay. in those deals, go check them out over at humblebundle.com. I would love to see a Humble Bundle for PlayStation VR, and I would love to see one for Oculus Quest as well. True. Mm. Yeah, I'll be down for that. I know. I, I, I still, the thing I like that i miss and and this goes to vr games as well but i miss their soundtrack packs i just um, adore oh. game soundtracks and, or and merch free that, merch so you could get like a shirt with it too you know? I, don't know I like the digital goods i like i like anything that you know i can just buy for not very much money yeah. oh, so <laughs> uh, tell me more about that because i sometimes like also with half life and some other you get like soundtracks but i'm always like why am i even paying for this i'm like it's in the game so why like you like to listen to it i get it but yeah like what is the charm about buying soundtracks uh, from games um no i like i like getting them i like getting a bunch of games even again vr games non-vr games uh, those osts all together at a decent price because okay. then you're you're supporting the artist but yeah, you're okay. not paying 20 quid each you know so that that's that's the attraction for me mm. so you're not listening to them necessarily or oh yeah I, oh yeah i absolutely do yeah yeah I, okay. I, some games have like uh like like i know zim for example really loves uh doom you know oh. the, the soundtracks <laughs> for them are being made by like really you know, top. I know. Uh, Nick Gordon is, is amazing. That, that, yeah. that hires it, it, like you know on, on a Friday night, you know, and everything. Chilling. Yeah, <laughs> if you need to tear down an internal partition wall, check on the Doom OST. You know, oh. that's going to get you through it, all right. Oh, absolutely. You run through it, in fact, <laughs> listening to that music. Um, but yeah, it, it does. I put it on when I have to get something done. It's like yeah. that's it. That's going to light a fire under your ass. That is. It does. Yeah. It does. So that is um, the first bit of software news. Next bit. We'll be happy uh, if you're on a quest. This is some lovely little news for you. Uh, apparently, Upload VR uh, found this when they were digging around the Oculus Quest 2 Facebook group, and they made a little article about it. Hmm. Uh, and they found that there's a discount code for the Oculus platform. This applies to both Quest and PC uh, platform. Hmm. Uh, we don't know how long this code is going to last for, but it's uh, apparently working right now. So if you're quick, you can get 25% discount on any game from the Oculus Store using the discount code MOBILE25. So just add the games to your basket, uh, apply the code, get 25% off. So get the discount while you can. Yeah, but I don't know how I, long it's going to last. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, is this is this intentional or is this something that was meant for someone else? Because the thing is, developers, they just launch their game on the store. They have a prize on it. Then there comes a discount. Maybe Oculus still pays them the, I don't know. But the thing is, they're not making that money. So like instantly when you have a new game coming on the store now as a dev and you're working really hard on it and you have to make your return, there's a freaking discount code <laughs> that you, you, can, you can use in every game you want. Yeah, but Nathy, not... that will be contractually bound between the dev yeah, and okay, Oculus. Okay, okay, okay. If they make a if they make an error, I just to it'll say. be out of Facebook's pocket. Yeah, okay. So I, I yeah. get the bleeding heart. I get it. But, no, but I like I like discount too. Yeah. It's just that for some devs, it's like they're they're you know uh, try harding on getting a game on the store, and then it's like twenty five off without them even wanting it. Yeah, I'm not sure how the monetization <laughs> yeah, no. works with a discount code like this, <laughs> but uh, we're not quite sure how this came about. Um, yeah, but so a lot of people have been talking about it. Apparently, it still works. So if you want twenty five percent off a game, now's your opportunity. You, some so people, some not... people say like, "Oh, I'm using it for months now. Like it's the most normal." No, no, thing no. Ever. It's a, it's a, it's a one off thing. You can't. Okay. You, you can only use it for one purchase. That's uh, what I was just I about to ask you. I was going to say, for is it purchase. single use yeah. or is it multi use? Because if it's multi use, yeah. go on there or just hammer. <laughs> so basically, you <laughs> buy the most expensive games possibly yeah. or i don't know also if you add multiple games to your basket that it'll apply what if you can you also do 25 on gifts total. i don't know because then i could make well i'm now getting into a territory that i Try should it. Be. so you you make another account oh wait no no wait you need a facebook so i need to make another you, facebook account you, nate two. he's gonna buy no, don't do that for uh, no nate two is actually gonna, okay if i don't get banned then i could gift myself a game with 25 off if you're a young person like a lot listening of to this, for, for, for well, some people are really low on money, Mike. 
So you, you could you could well, like place like an order for like ten thousand dollars and like twenty five percent off and then sell it again for ninety. <laughs> yeah, wow! What the hell? I love I love the way we just go to right to the extreme on this show. Yeah. The dodging Dude, business practices free. with everybody. who doesn't like free stuff? You gotta use <laughs> that in free. It's twenty five percent off. But twenty five percent is free. <laughs> wait wait wait! I just want to say you've been a complete boomerang here. You started off going bleeding hearts like oh please we got to feed our yeah. debts and now no, you're give like me, give me, give how me. do I how do I game the system? <laughs> like what the Can't hell? I'm, I'm just, I'm just, Pick a side. No, but I'm thinking with with consumers who are low on money. I'm not thinking about myself, but people who are really right. you know, wanting something fun to play. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Highly recommend buying Cosmo Dread. Love that game. So sad it's over now. Uh, so if Hashtag, you're looking for a uh, mic uh, code, I don't have mic. a code, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, no, okay. it's Mobile 25, not Mic oh, 25. Okay. So okay. bear that in mind. Still, um, still try it, guys. Still try it. I don't believe him. Don't, don't try it. <laughs> Nothing will happen. Mike will get they'll, paid. They'll, they'll just have a go at me for saying something like that. Um, <laughs> very suspicious though, that you're now. saying. Mike yeah, but it's 25. suspicious. <laughs> it's almost like Mike is making money off Cosmo Dread now. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I just genuinely well, love that game. No, you're I not just, paid by them? No. Mm, I just okay. wish, yeah, wish yeah, I had. Sure. Wish sure I had that's what you always say. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on. That is all the news this week. We've had some hardware, we've had some games. Now let's talk a little bit about App Lab, because this is kind of interesting. This is like a little interesting story that came about. Mm. Um, so if you're not familiar with App Lab, it's a little store that's kind of separate from the official store, uh, where you can sort of find experimental content that previously kind of resided on SideQuest. Um, it's kind of like Oculus's answer to SideQuest, uh, but they've made it way easier. You don't have to sideload content anymore. You should install applications and experience with a single click. Super, mm -hmm. super easy. They've now got about 150 apps and experiences on wow. App Lab now. It's How long has it been online? That's, since a few months. Yeah. Jan, wow. since Jan, right? Crazy. And some of the most popular ones, of course, like Pavlov Shack, uh, are now on there as well. So they're yeah. really starting to take a bit of market share away from SideQuest now, which is sad because, you know, we love SideQuest. We've supported them for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. They'll always have a special place in our heart, and they'll always have the content that won't be available on App Lab. So they'll have like the Dr. Beef mods, yeah. Beat Saber mods, other obscure stuff that doesn't make it on <laughs> App Lab. <laughs> But, you know, uh, continue to support them. I'm actually wearing their merch right now. Let me show you this. This is yeah. pretty sweet. Talking about uh, supporting. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Wow. It's got like the SideQuest logo on the sleeve. Mike is like stuff. a living SideQuest website. <laughs> I'm like yeah. a living billboard. Yeah, you're a living for, billboard. For, for Cosmo Dread and SideQuest. <laughs> I support them both <laughs> until it just I die. Needs, it just needs on the back like Mike25. <laughs> yeah. My discount code. So, yeah, if you like that kind of merch and if you want to support SideQuest, yeah. which I recommend you do, <laughs> Then they're going to be launching that uh, fairly soon. So uh, <laughs> I like that we got to channel. see your loft. That was uh, that was the most. I didn't like pay that? attention at all to the hoodie. Yeah, the no. zoom out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Good. going back to App Lab. Obviously, uh, you know, it's a, it's a really cool little system. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a story that came from Tony, uh, who's known as the Scarred Ghost on Twitter, and you can check out his full story at the Scarred Ghost dot com. S K R A S K A W R E D G H O S T dot com. It's kind of like a VR news site that he runs over there. But Pretty he's cool he's stuff. writing awesome articles. Like yeah, he's a dev as well. Check it out. You know? Yeah, he's a dev as well. Yeah. Um, so basically, he wanted to put the App Lab uh, test submission, um, you know, and, and see how it all works and, and, and submit his own app uh, through the system and see what the process is like. So what he did was he got the Unity Cube. Um, it's like a dev tool in Unity. It's just a single gray boring cube. And he put that in a VR space. You've got hands uh, through the Oculus touch controllers, but you can't even interact with the cube. So it's very, very basic. But he decided, right, I'm just going to make the bare minimum I possibly can and submit it to App Lab and see what happens. So through this process, he learned that, that the App Lab doesn't really have the curation that we possibly thought it did have before. You know, we obviously know that the official Oculus Store has a high curation process. Mm. You know, it needs to meet a minimum standard. Doesn't it, it needs to sort of be quite unique and offer something different on the store that isn't already available. Um, and hit a certain amount of sort of criteria. And we've seen a lot of people get rejected through that process as well. Mm. Um, but it seems that we were initially wrong because we thought that App Lab had its own curation process, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Well, it has some, some restrictions, but not really curation process because this app, after six weeks, was able to actually make it onto App Lab. So now if you go onto App Lab, you can actually look for Unity Cube and you'll find it on there and you can play it. <laughs> so... 
some of the restrictions or, or, or some of the requirements for a submission, uh, which he details in this kind of blog post, which is interesting if you're an, you know, an inspiring developer and you want to get a game on Quest or App Lab, I'd highly recommend you go check it out. Uh, but some of the things that were required are you need five in-game screenshots from different perspectives. So you obviously had to move around the cube, get some unique uh, screenshots. <laughs> it also needs a trailer because these need to be added to okay. uh, a store yeah. page. Um, it's not allowed to have any copyright content included, which makes sense. No adult content because no mature content like that is allowed on the Oculus Store. Um, and you're not allowed, this is kind of interesting, you're not allowed to request permissions for features like access to the Quest's microphone unless your app specifically requires it. So with a microphone, for example, if your app's like a multiplayer game where it requires you to communicate with each other, then fine. But as this is just an app with a cube in it, they were like, why are you requesting the app? And they originally rejected the pro the submission through that. But there's a, uh, there's a backbone selection. to that. That's, that's because, and Facebook has to comply with the general data protection regulation which means yep. you can't collect information uh, that, that's not for the purpose. Oh. So that's the reason. It's in Europe, that. by the way. It's GDPR, that's, right? Yeah, so, yeah, so so every, but actually, it's for European citizens no matter where, as long as you're a European subject. Yeah, I know, I know. And that's the, re yeah. that's the, that's yeah. the reason that it would affect you globally. Same with them cookies. Yeah. Cookies. Yes. Bonnie is in the chat asks, uh, do we have to pick pick at the cube and find out what's in the center? Is this a continuation of the Molyneux oh, that contest? That Molyneux thing. That Molyneux oh thing. My oh, my God. Oh that my was amazing. Days. Back in the day. Was, wasn't oh. that uh, 22 cans? Um, or 22 yeah, cans? Something it, right? like that? What, what did the winner get? I oh, he got remember. shafted. He was a dude in Edinburgh. Yeah, exactly. He got shafted. They, they didn't actually end up giving him the thing that they, they, they owed they him. They didn't honor it? No, they didn't honor it. That's the whole thing. <gasps> he is such a slippery ficker, that Molyneux guy. For, <laughs> for years, I was like, black and white, what an amazing game. Populous, all this kind of stuff. And then they just totally shafted this kid. He was like a college kid, I think. Um you should definitely yeah. look that up. It's an amazing story. I will, I will. Story. I will. But yeah, sadly, there's nothing. It's just it's just a gray cube. Like, don't get excited. It is. Do get excited. How do you, uh, how do you a make hidden, a trailer of a, of a gray cube? Are there any... Put some, like, put cinematic some, music behind it. Pan like, zoom, zoom in a little bit. There and, like, it's okay. a pan zoom. I ran it for cube. us. The thing that I find Wait, most it interesting... The <laughs> <laughs> thing I find most interesting about this is that it's got reviews. Shall we check out some of the reviews, <laughs> oh, lads? Please, oh, please, please tell me. Do this. I want to hear okay. this. So here's the reviews. All right, the first one is a beautiful and touching experience from, from user <laughs> artificial. This is one of the experiences that really showed me what VR is truly capable of and leaves me with hope for the future. Nice. <laughs> this what is truly that person's name, please? We need to... Artificial. Artificial. Oh, nice. Yeah, helpful oh. to 43 users. Um, so oh. this is... A, helpful? <laughs> I'm surprised, I'm surprised this isn't even on the Oculus, the official Oculus store, and I'm even more surprised that it's free. In my opinion, this is one of the best VR games to date. <laughs> I wow. absolutely love this. Shall we check one more? One more. Here please, we go. Please, please more. Uh, please. I could listen to this for the yeah, rest of the please, show. Omnom 143, five stars. Greatest game ever. The experience <laughs> is just impeccable and fascinating. The graphics are out of this world and insane. The Quest hardware... Can't even handle this game. It's the game of the future. Boneworks who? <laughs> Half-Life Alex who? Beat Saber who? Super hot who? This game is 100,000 out of 10 experience, and I recommend everyone plays this masterpiece. There you go. Oh, wow. Boom. This amazing. game is amazing. But uh, this go. is uh, also kind of shocking in some ways. Uh, because the thing is, like, the thing is right now, it's 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 okay. Um, but, I mean, we've also seen what happened to the Rift Store in some ways where there are games on there that shouldn't be on there. Um, I don't, yeah, maybe, like, it's, it's still too new to be saying, okay, we have seen some stuff on there that is just not, that shouldn't be on there. But it kind of shows that, but, I mean, on one side, it's fine because the moment if Facebook jumps onto this again, then App Lab becomes another official store kind of thing where it's getting even higher to get on that, you know? But this yeah. sounds a little bit loose uh, <laughs> in ways, you know? But I think it's promising if you're a budding developer and you want to get something on App Lab and get some exposure yeah, out come there. Come on, a cube. I mean, that that's something out of this world, you know? But It's a functional uh, app, and I think the that's, that's the... would be, uh, like, what if you, like provide screenshots and a trailer of something that is not representative of the experience that you're on. Yeah, they would definitely check that. They will definitely check you that. Sure? And you won't be allowed. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would yeah, say yeah. so, yeah. But I mean, I, because I don't... They, they did actually give him feedback. You know, they gave him detailed feedback, which right. is something we've not necessarily heard uh, before because we, you know, previous sort of stories about being rejected was that they didn't get any feedback at all. Whereas, you know, from what Tony's saying, from his experience, even with 
app lab and not the official store was that when he did get rejected because he enabled the microphone they actually told him like this is something that you shouldn't have enabled and this is why uh, and gave him that detailed feedback he was able to correct it resubmit it and then within six weeks it's on the store uh, you know what I, I just love humanity for these kinds of things i love the internet i love humanity for these kinds of things specifically do you guys remember when um the iphone launched and on that store you could buy a gem that was just a a, a JPEG or a GIF or a PNG of, oh, and of, how of much a gem. Was it? it was like a red ruby. Um, the price, I think it was like $10,000 or $6,000 or something like that. It was something ridiculous. And all it was, was to show people, and I think it said something like, I'm rich, and it just had this gem, and that was it. Wow. It got pulled well, in the end. Like one person, one person to buy it, that's it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But the thing is, you can even, I mean, you can charge for something silly on on the store and someone would pay it's for it. It's the kind of thing that Elon Musk would buy and just tweet out and just be like, yeah, look, I just spent like 10K on like a JPEG. It's like how <laughs> NFTs work wallet. at the moment. It still blows my mind, exactly. the whole NFT thing. I don't thing. understand that. We yeah. should sell a photo of you, Mike. I think it's going to go for a million. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's, I'll tell you what we should do. We should do something like that for charity and just give the money to a, a decent charity that actually deserves it. You know, let's do something like that. Okay. Let's not all buy Lambos. Let's let's do something nice. Lambos, yeah. yeah. Lambos is the way to go. Um, so yeah, that is the uh, the little story from Tony the Scarred Ghost about okay. submitting the Unity Cube to App Lab. Worked out in the end. So you know, if you're a budding developer and you want an app on App Lab, and maybe you you know that's a good path to get on the official Oculus Store, then you know, give it a go. At least, especially if you want to test your app and get some community feedback. I think that's a yeah. great way of doing it through App Lab. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I'm 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 curious. Um, is it scared ghost or is it scared ghost? I always I always read ghost it as scared, scared ghost. I think it's I think it's scared ghost, but it's spelt scarred ghost. Yeah. S K A double R E D. I'd love yeah, to know. True. I'd love to know. We'll have to ask him. We'll have to get him on the show one day. We yeah, should. He's an interesting guy. We should. We should. Um, so that is all the news this week. Uh, we've actually plowed through it very very Wait, quickly. So you're gonna have to stretch out the releases. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can we, uh, uh, for the next hour. Wow, that so, dovetails way too well. Okay. So, Rowdy, can you look up some uh, release while no one is listening and watching? Uh, yeah, of what? course, of course. Okay. <laughs> if we can take some questions at the end. Uh, if you want to ask us some questions about what's going on in the VR industry right now, then Sounds we can do that. Good. All right, okay, releases. Good. Let's 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 do this. So you said stretch it out. Let's stretch it out. How uh -oh. about we start off with something just? I don't know. Does this beat the cube? I don't know if this beats Unity Cube. Maybe barely. Maybe. Maybe just, just barely. Space Slurpees, okay? Space Slurpees. Space this is, slurpees. to put it in any other way, would, would, would be incorrect. This is Slither.io in VR. Um, oh, I see now, yeah. And this demonstrates a point. I, I think what we've seen- Originally, it sounded like some sort of like STD. <laughs> slurpees, oh, I got the Slurpees. Um, <laughs> this is essentially, for, for, for Americans or, or people who are not of you know recent generations and have played Slither, uh, think Snake, right? Nokia, Snake, Snake yeah. my old school mobile phone game, right? So, uh, just Snake, doing not that, Solid Snake. <laughs> just Snake, not Solid Snake. Yeah, I miss, I miss that guy. Um, but this is essentially a Snake variant in VR multiplayer game that's out for six dollars, five five pounds twenty on Steam, and uh, it's by the devs Starcade Arcade. It's I don't know. Oh. I, it, it, it's dear it's, God, like. It, it, the, the thing I wanted to, to kind of represent is a lot of the success we've seen in VR, not all of it, but a lot of the success we've seen in VR has been some clones of 2D games, right? You got Counter-Strike, look at Pavlov. Um, I'm sure there's a bunch of others I, I, I didn't uh, the, the, the latest one that you talked about, the police one, GTA stuff. Oh, right. Um, well, we'll see, we're v. yet to see if Gang V is going to be yeah. um, any good. Yeah. But a lot of devs will take inspiration or directly lift and shift uh, and clone a game and then VRify it. I think this is the perfect example of a game where if you move from a two-dimensional play space to what they claim is six-dimensional space. Six dimensional. Like, <laughs> Rowdy, can you explain to me why the they think it's like, six, like, 60? How does that work? <laughs> You space need to be in multiple locations at the same time. Time. Space, I know five time. dimensions, right? There's but what's the six? Still, yeah. Yeah. Where's the six? Multi-dimensional. Anyway. You you have to be a multi-dimensional creature as well. Yeah. So anyway, like the basic dynamics of this, they're slightly different than Snake. You you, you draw your snake. Don't impact another snake as as you're running in 60 space. Again, what they're saying is 3D space, um, and it's multiplayer. Don't collide. Your snake grows armor for some reason when it gets longer and uh, avoid the other obstacles that appear in the scene. And that's as much as I want to spend on this. But having seen it, 
because it, and I'll dovetail this into, into other releases that we're going to be talking about, I think you got to be careful when you try to translate your game design uh, from something that was in a different kind of dimensionality when you port it to VR, because the chances of you running into another object in <laughs> six dimensional space is so much less likely than on a flat plane. So anyway, six dimensions. And, if, is, and if you find I mean, yourself is... with a with a case of the space slurpees, then get yourself down to the chemist and get some antibiotics. I am <laughs> very confused, but sure. Antibiotics? <laughs> not going to work. <laughs> not going to work, no? What do we need for this one? Uh, maybe a... Special cream. Maybe a swift bullet to the okay. head. That'll take us into the next wow. one. So yeah, that will take you into six one. dimension for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, think, so, I think that's a good one. This, this is a money grab. That's what it is. The, yeah, I don't know. It, it's devs tried it, and I think it's not going to be successful for them. Honestly, next so, one is Alvo. So Rowdy, Rowdy, I want you to try this for the next show, so we can hear how amazing <laughs> six dimensions are. Okay. You want to hear me complain about another VR game? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say. Take one for the team if he would be playing this. Um, next one is a PSVR release, and and this mm. this is kind of reminding me of um, um, oh Gollum, uh, which was a game that like strung out for years. Anyway, oh, Alvo's been Gollum, yeah. awaited eagerly on PSVR. Um, if you're wondering what Alvo means, Alvo stands for a long variable length object. Okay. It doesn't, but uh, I'd like to pretend it does. Actually, it translates to target, which is also in their branding. This is a shooter game. So this is an online VR tactical shooter that basically clones um, Counter-Strike type mm -hmm. mechanisms, right? Um, so it's got similar game modes as Counter-Strike, Search and Destroy, Deathmatch, Team Deathmatch, um, that kind of thing. There was a King of the Hill. I'm not clear yet from their website and literature if that's still going to be in. Um, there are bots uh, if you can't get full online lobbies, but given this is landing on PlayStation, and as I said, has a name out there, some people are waiting on this one, it, 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 it might do all right. Um, looks like a fast-paced FPS shooter, modern guns, modern maps. You know, it, it's, it's what you would expect from like a CS-type clone. Uh, this is out on the 13th of April. The price is a bit high. Uh, so it's $40, 35 euro. Yes, Europeans, I finally quoted a euro price uh, and 30 pounds. So oh, I just, hey, that makes I just sense. Saw, I just saw a dog being stuck in a wall in the trailer and I saw a guy also <laughs> sliding around the wall. <laughs> that looked amazing. <laughs> so that's Alvo and that's coming out April 13th. I don't know. Um, one thing I would mention for our PlayStation 5 owners, uh, the devs did mention, they said no PS5 visuals uh, updates at launch, but it's on okay. their to-do list. Also, mm -hmm. if you're keen on Elvo, and for some reason you're not keen on the other established VR shooters that we've got, like Onward and Pavlov, uh, this is also coming to Oculus Rift, Quest, and Steam later, mm -hmm. but at an unreleased date. It should be around about June, is what the devs are saying. And it will have cross-platform play. Yeah, so, I like I like the fact that they're using the AIM controller with the yeah. the the PSVR version. True. Yeah. yeah. That'd be fun to use. I think it'd be hard. I think if you launched and you didn't have that, this style of game, you should probably mm. be shot. Yeah. It'd be yeah. interesting to see how the PSVR community adopts uh, it. Mm. Yeah. But like what Rowdy's saying, through the trailer, I sense a little bit of bugginess. Like, I'm not sure this is ready to come out of the oven, but it's coming out of the oven. So, yeah, let's see the other what the side, I mean, saying. Uh, if there's not much coming out on PlayStation, then people sometimes yeah. just take the box for granted. I still wonder how people find stuff. Like, how do you find? Like, you go to the PlayStation Store in Europe at least, and there is you cannot find a new VR game easily. It is it is very that's very not difficult. In your face, uh, that's for sure. It's not even in the latest like releases. When this launches, if this actually lands on the latest releases string, I'll be surprised. I've seen other releases go and be silenced from that. I don't know what the point of that is, given their mm -hmm. push. They should reestablish what they had before. Just a simple chronological list of PSVR releases, mm -hmm. please. Yeah. Having seen like a little sleuth of uh, PSVR releases, are you regretting your decision to sell? Is no, it? nothing. You no can ask us every time. Yeah, yeah. You, you kind of you want to bring <laughs> drag me over the coals or something. But uh, I'm I'm totally Wait. happy to take a PSVR break um, because the PlayStation for me was really I don't like tech going unused. It needed an, yeah. another home where someone would make use of it. And um, I'm glad to have gotten kind of purged myself of it for now cleanse my bowels of it, and then next year I'm going to be ready for a smorgasbord of PlayStation <laughs> VR 2. Yeah, bring it on. So, third one here, uh, and this is like uh, this is like Lover's Lane. Uh, these two gentlemen uh, were, were, yeah, 
practically uh, making out in this one, last I saw. This is Carly and the Reapermen, uh, which is coming to Quest, mm. which is a bit of a surprise. Um, so that's a re-release. It's been released on pretty much the other platforms, and you've had a chance to play it on PlayStation or, or on P PC VR. Uh, but now it's coming to Quest. So for $18, 15 pounds, Odd Raven Studios is dropping this asymmetrical gameplay experience. We don't get many of these in VR, and um, this is one that Mike and Nathie had played before. So it's a it's a what they call a couch co-op, asymmetrical gameplay. One player is this player on the screen, the computer screen. Uh, one player is in the headset. And uh, the trailer I'm running actually, because they haven't landed the official Quest trailer, this is from the Rift release. So the visuals might differ a little bit if you're watching uh, the stream live. This reminds me a lot of Eye in the Sky VR, which was another similar asymmetrical experience with a robot and yeah. kind of a, a big robot in the sky, which was quite fun. But you guys have played this. Um, what were your yeah. thoughts? Tell us. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, I really like this game, actually, because um, it was a while ago now, maybe a couple of years back, when I visited Nathy in uh, the Netherlands and uh, hung out for a little bit. And this is one of the games we played because we wanted to play some, you know, unique games. And we had the opportunity to do like a, a local couch co-op VR game like this one. And um, one of us was in VR, one of us was playing on a, like a flat screen, like on the PC. But now with this version of it, with the Quest version, you can actually both players be in VR and control both uh, the characters, which is Carly and the Reaper Man together. Um, and you can do it online as well, as far as I'm aware, which is really great. Um, so yeah, I think this is one of those quite unique VR experiences. It's not very often you get a game like this uh, around, especially that's been adapted now to be in yeah. both headsets rather than mm. one flat screen and one uh, in VR. So yeah, I'd highly recommend checking this one out if you've got like a buddy that you play regularly with. Uh, it's one of those super chill games uh, that you could just chat, play together. It's got some really nice puzzle design as well that, that gets you both thinking. Mm. Um, it's a really cool one. I really like this game. It's like I proper really like collaborative game. then, because I know we've yeah. seen oh, yeah, we've totally. seen we've seen a few asymmetrical games where the thinking player and then the kind of non-thinking player role. And I don't like that. I like it when they they bring both players into the gameplay. You know, and it's... you definitely need um, both players on their A game because it's quite challenging even from the beginning, right, Nathy? From what I remember. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah, I really like this game. So yeah, looking forward to seeing how it how it works on Quest. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, it I takes think... off because I, I felt like when this came out on PC, it didn't sell amazingly well. It was more of a hidden gem. So it I was think a hidden on gem. Quest, yeah. it was it's, it's gem. gonna finally get its you know uh, yeah well fame it deserves. Hard, though, because you need two people, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. But the other thing is, so 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 that's nice that you've got the multi headset feature. I didn't pick that up. So thanks for highlighting that, Mike. And I also think that you've got. Um, the, the people who have quests at the moment, a lot of them are sharing them with like friends and family, you know, in their house when they've been stuck in in lockdown. So I think the timing of this works really well in their favor, particularly that it's kind of a dry spell at the moment. So I think they mm -hmm. can see some pretty good sales this month. Uh, so It'll that be is interesting to see how it works with like uh, multi users. You know, like in, in your household, Zim, for example, yeah. like if you could just load it up on multiple quests and play together, like you can with yeah. Walkabout Mini Golf, for example. Uh, um, those features are, that to the are test. absolutely app sellers for me. Like if 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 an app works very easily multi-account, I will throw money as it devs for that reason. I mean, I've got. We were talking a bit earlier about the software stack behind corporate. Um, let's say corporate VR headset setups, my household mm -hmm. at the moment, like I've got four quests. I'd love to have a central management app, you know? I'd love it if yeah. Oculus would at some point have, you yeah. know, a family version where you could centrally even, you know, restrict content if you wanted to, uh, you know, uh, patch, you know, push patches, for example, to the various games, check if headsets are on, battery levels, that type of thing. So maybe yeah. one day that's what we'll have. So uh, Dave the Psycho in the chat is asking how the save system works in this game and basically it just works on the checkpoint system. It's got like numerous levels. So as soon as you clear a level, it's like saves saves where yeah. you are. You've got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, I've got a couple of other mentions uh, before we close out. Um, so similar to what we were saying earlier about the Humble Bundle sale on PC, there are some sales. There's a spring sale, again, at least in Europe. I don't know if this carries over to the US or not. Um, so I wanted to mention three titles that are really cool on PlayStation VR. So if you are on PSVR and you're kind of like wondering, well, oh, what should I be playing? Um, Resident Evil 7 is only eight pounds at the moment. So that's around about $10 equivalent. Wow. Um, LA Noir, the VR case files, which is a fantastic piece from Rockstar Games. Yeah. And they're only VR uh, 4A so far. So if you're really itching for kind of GTA 5 style action, driving behind a car, some gunplay, 
um, solving mysteries and, and that cool facial experience that you get in LA Noir, but in VR. That's a that's a that's a really fun game for twelve pounds forty nine or about fifteen dollars. Oh, nice. And and then uh, finally, Dreams. So Dreams is a game where you can make experiences, scenes. Uh, games yourself and download community content as well. So Dreams is seventeen forty nine. I think that's half off. Um, so if you're looking for a creative uh, game, then Dreams is for you as well. Now, cool. final piece of mention. I have to throw our hat to Guy Godin and Virtual Desktop for his latest update. If you're a big Virtual Desktop fan, pay attention. Just yesterday, we've launched 1.20.3 update, which has... Uh, fixed game compatibility for a number of popular PC VR titles. This includes Echo VR, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, big favorite of mine, World War I Fighters, it's a relatively new game, that's the World War I bomber, uh, Creed Rise to Glory, that's got to be a fun one, playing Creed in, in full def, uh, you know, tetherless in the middle of your room, please don't punch a TV, Layers of Fear <laughs> VR, which is quite atmospheric, and again, Room Scale is really going to help you out in that one. And then a, a favorite of Rowdy's recently, Arden's Wake. Uh, so that has also been fixed. So that now works with virtual desktop. There are also haptic update fixes for Echo VR, Onward, and several other games. So I just wanted to, again, throw that in there, a virtual desktop update with some compatibility fixes. The headliner, which I think is going to be really interesting, say you've got a Mac and you've got a, um, and you've got a, Quest, for example, the Mac operating system streamer is now working for streaming your virtual desktop. So again, if you haven't tried this out before, Netflix, Amazon Prime, or just watching movies on YouTube, it's the crispest way, highest resolution way, is to stream that from your PC or now Mac. Game support for Mac is not out at the moment. Mm. So that's it. That's for our releases. I'll just recap no, quickly. So that was Space Slurpees at the start. Yeah. Um, Alvo, if you want to cap somebody, that's coming out on the 13th. Carly and the Reaper Man is out on the 15th on Quest. And the sale titles were Resident Evil 7, L.A. Noir, and Dreams. And that's us for releases nice. this week. Yeah, Carly and the Reaper nice. Man is the one that I definitely recommend out of, uh, of that lot. Yeah. It's a really cool game, if you can find someone else to play with, of course. There you go. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be uh, wrapping up the show very shortly. But if you've got any questions for us, uh, chuck them in the chat now and we can answer a few questions before we wrap up as we're sort of running a bit more uh, ahead of schedule than we usually are. So just a reminder, this is a weekly VR, AR and MR talk show live streamed every Saturday on YouTube and Twitch. The show goes live at 7 p.m. in Europe, 6 p.m. in the UK and 12 midday in Central US. You can also check out the audio version, which is available on iTunes, SoundCloud and on Spotify. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed the uh, live stream on YouTube and subscribe to the channel for all our future podcasts. If you're listening to the audio version, we love you too. Um, <laughs> so uh, another bit of uh, news is that we will be taking a break um, after this week. Um, so I think we're going to take maybe two, maybe four weeks off. We're not 100% sure, but we'll keep you updated on like the, the community tab on YouTube and on Twitter as well. Um, we're just, uh, you know, getting some time uh, finally here in the UK uh, out of lockdown. So it'd be nice to spend some weekends uh, with our friends and family. Um, so I hope you understand. Uh, but we'll be back, of course. We're not going anywhere. Um, so questions from the chat. Let's see if anyone's got any interesting questions. Are you guys excited for the PSVR 2? Uh, what are your thoughts? That's from Michele VR. Yeah, 100% hyped for PSVR 2. We've talked about this in depth on the show many, many times. But I think the biggest reason why we're excited... Uh, you know, behind the fact that it's going to be new hardware with better tracking, no doubt, and everything else, is that it's going to be bringing the A game in terms of quality VR games. Um, something that we're kind of lacking right now. Uh, we don't really have that many AAA titles, but if they come out of the gates with like a new Astro Bot, if, if Resident Evil 8 gets VR support, then we're going to be well. swimming in some really epic content. So that's what I'm most excited about, and I think everyone shares the same opinion here on the show as well. well Oh, oh, mate! If you don't mind, I'm I'm gonna give an update. I forgot about something. Uh, sure. Call this a, a post podcast highlight. Good old Jim Barnaby uh, tried <laughs> eye racing for the first time, and I do say Jim Barnaby because I have changed my official online name to Jim Barnaby in that game. Really? Yeah, I did. No I did. They officially did? changed my name in the game to Jim Barnaby. So if you see me Amazing. on the racetrack. Yeah, absolutely um, brilliant. That's my favorite support thread since Sony called me <laughs> Barnaby. 
uh, is when the iRacing team Biden. said, that's right, you're now, uh, you're safe, Mr. Protected Citizen, because normally you have to expose your real name, uh, which mm -hmm. I don't mind, but I just thought it would be funny. So I tried iRacing for the first time. I'm a long-term driving set of fan, all that kind of stuff. And I have to say, as much as I don't like subscription plans, that was absolutely incredible. Uh, really cool feel. The car on the track feels better than I've I've had in any other simulator, um, which is kind of hard to say after six years, almost seven years now of Assetto Corsa and other games, things like Project Cars, Dirt Rally, all that best sim feeling I've had. I probably should have had that for the highlight of the week, but some part of my brain turned that off until now. <laughs> and someone said Barnaby and boom, it came right back. So if you are a racer, uh, check out iRacing. You can get usually a trial for a couple of bucks or whatever. It's mm -hmm. really worth doing. It's a little bit confusing interface, but the feel of the car on the track is 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 really quite breathtaking for a sim. Will it steal your heart from Assetto? Um, right now, probably not because of the simulation, because of the uh, the cost, the subscription cost. I'm trying to stay away from that stuff. Like you know, ever right. since World of Warcraft and stuff happened, you know, it's like yeah. I've I've known to stay away from subscriptions as best I can. But I think by the time I get in Canada, get settled with a sim rig again. Uh, I'm worried for my wallet. I'll put it that put it that way. Nice, <laughs> yeah. nice. We had another question about um, yeah. hip orientation locomotion uh, with the Decker gear, mm -hmm. and it was something actually I was going to mention on the show, and that is that um, Decker have actually opened it up for iPhone and uh, traditional yeah. uh, Vive tracker support uh, for their hip rotation um, sort of software. So you don't even need to buy their specific Decker Move module. You could use a phone or you could use a, a Vive Which tracker is, to your hip. Oh, that's so really, smart. Like really credits to them because I think that's a very smart move to do yeah. that because the community would have figured it out anyway, how to do that because you can use indeed your phone accelerometer and your, your uh, your uh, uh, orientation tracker there and, and seeing like, you know, if you, you don't really need it, of course, they will always have the upper hand because, you know, in terms of battery, in terms of yep. like usage, in terms of, you know, footprint, you know, that this device is specifically made for that. So I think it's a, it's, it's a really smart choice to do that. And to answer the question uh, from uh, the Nexus Lord who says like, do you, do, you, do you think that this will become the new standard in VR? I think that we've brought this up a, a while ago, even with the announcement of the Decker gear, especially like for like first person shooters. Yeah. Um, I think that this is really like the way forward because it's a much more natural way of moving uh, because, you know, you, your hips are always facing the direction that you're moving. So I think it's, it's, it's a, a much more natural kind of way of uh, moving about in virtual reality so as well. A question, is that, is that, is that like an app you install then? Uh, this, the, we don't know just yet. Okay. They just announced that it would be happening uh, in the near future. So once we get the solid details, we can obviously talk about it more on the show. But um, so great, it's great though. that they're opening it up. Yeah, yeah, it's so sure. great. Just multi-use device because most people will have a, a phone in their pocket or something like that anyway, yeah. right? So fantastic. Yeah. And it's a great way to just test it out. And then you can say, well, I, I tested it out. It works. Now I'm going to invest in the actual official module. You know, it's really exactly. smart from them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's cool. Uh, any qu any other questions? Oh, from for Nathy, are you going to keep the Tash uh, while we're gone? Dun, 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 dun. Uh, mm. No, I don't think so. <laughs> no. no, I don't. No, no I don't. You think... don't like it? No, it's fine, but uh, I don't know. I don't okay. know yet. I have no idea. Well, like you guys well. grow things that I can't grow. Well. <laughs> But this is what like happens when you're is, young. You're young, free. You just like, yeah, whatever. You just don't even know. The stupid thing is, this is you don't even plan your life. This is the best I can do. do. Just throw it out there to the wind. Hey, Nathan, I like, feel you, man. I feel happens. you. I always, I always wanted you know, to be like, a guy who could grow a full beard, but I can't. Like this, a lot of people think that this is just like a fashionable a thing. I, I can't grow on the sides. It doesn't. No. It's just. I never tried to grow natural a beard, goatee. Uh, it's just that a lot of people think I'm 12 on YouTube, so <laughs> I, I usually try to keep that persona. So yeah. Yeah, like yeah. the moment yeah. I have this, you know, then people think, oh, hmm, maybe he's older. Yeah. So, but no, yeah. it, it's definitely it's, it's definitely always interesting. Like when you're off air or you're 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 not live or like Christmas or whatever. Well, last time we took a break, definitely it's like just let it grow. You know, go go fuzzier or try a different hairstyle. But like oh, once you're yeah. back on, I mean, there's a lot of pressure for dudes. You know, have your facial I mean, hair. I mean, I mean go back to the first episode of the show or somewhere in the middle, <laughs> and you'll see how. <laughs> Things age. Things it's, it's, <laughs> it's insane. It's weird. Like sometimes you watch this show back a year, oh, yeah. and it's different already. It's strange, but yeah, true. It is. It evolves. It evolves. Yeah. Well, let's say it like that. Don't worry, yeah. Nathan. Once you hit sixteen, then you know beard, your beard grow will probably pick up. Okay. 
Well, Saucy asks, uh, when are you allowed to talk about GTA 6 VR? <laughs> I wish. I <laughs> wish. Oh, my God. <laughs> that would be such an epic thing. Please. Imagine. Imagine if we all went to, like, Rockstar's office and we can't talk oh. about what we played. <laughs> oh, amazing. Dude, just imagine, right? That's it. That's it. That, that, I, don't, I don't need anything else in my life, man. I literally, because um, they actually have, so uh, Rockstar North are based in Edinburgh. So I've, I've been to their, I've been outside their office and peered above the window. <laughs> through the windows. Because um, that's where Look they would the taken a couple of weeks off to go to Edinburgh. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> that, 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 that sounds fun. It wasn't, wasn't GTA 6. That's what I heard. Like a lot of people saying that it was going to be this kind of Miami uh, vibe, like Vice City. But I don't know. Maybe that's what people want. But it would be nice to go back to those. I, I'd absolutely you know. want Vice City. Vice City is, is my favorite GTA of all time, for sure. For a oh, number I of see. reasons. The music, the soundtrack, the... The uh, story was based the on, the, on, the, on Scarface. It was based on Scarface. It's basically Scarface. Yeah. Mm, that's a good film. Yeah. Yeah, I see. One of the best. For anyone who doesn't know, GTA V, the mod uh, in VR works very well. I got into it about yeah, a year ago, yeah. but it's like really polished now, and you can lose yourself in that very easily. Like, I, I'd never played GTA V before, but playing it with the VR mod is quite fun. It feels like such a long that... time ago now that we were playing it. <laughs> but it, it, it's surprising that uh, there was this one mod that allowed you to play with motion controllers as well, but that mod, like, completely disappeared uh the, the best it was one, really fun the best one was steering wheel set up with the police oh the the, the what was it the the police mod so you can get dispatched to all the calls and go mm. and respond to them that was so much fun i should i should do that again that was way should, way fun you should, you should do that and throw on your old gear mike that's you yeah <laughs> you can't throw. go back to the old days less paperwork though <laughs> dude it would be so much like if i think about like like i played five city so much the helicopter mission but then in vr you have to fly yeah. through the construction oh site. It was the hardest wow. mission ever. But even, imagine you have like this re remote that you can hold in VR to fly with a drone and stuff like that. It would be so much fun, man. Actually, Golfing. That's, <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 you could do proper trains, mini golf and stuff. I was going to say, did, um, did the helicopter, there was supposed to be, if I'm not mistaken, Microsoft Flight Simulator was supposed to be dropping a helicopter update. Uh, helicopter I thought in update. January or February or something. No, Maybe there I'm... is a there is a there is a game on Steam that looks like Microsoft Flight Simulator. No, 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 I'm not, I'm called... not talking about the one which shows the helicopter going over oh, cows. Okay. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, okay. But there was a okay. Q1 update supposed to be oh, coming to I Flight didn't know Sim. That. Like what they're they had these global updates, right? Where they were doing different cities. They did Europe okay, recently, cool. Ireland and Europe. Yeah, unless I'm mixing it up with a different game like uh, DCS or something. But there was definitely. Uh, a helicopter update coming due in Q1, but I haven't heard about it. So I'll, I'll look into that for uh, for next week yeah. or, so, well, or not. Well, in next next month, maybe. Who yeah. knows? Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll let you know, obviously. So yeah, I think that's enough questions. We'll wrap up the show, uh, have a little bit of an early finish. But yeah, just to let you know, we're going to be taking a break for a couple of weeks, maybe a month. Uh, we'll keep you posted on the community page on YouTube and the Twitter account. So make sure you keep an eye on those and we'll let you know when we're back. Um, hope you have a great time in that meantime. If you're in the UK and you're finally out of lockdown, go and enjoy it while it lasts. Uh, hopefully we're going to get chucked back into it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who knows what's going to happen. That's why I'm going to take my uh, advantage while I can. Uh, and go this is amazing for me. I get to stream on Saturdays again. I haven't done that in years since starting yeah. the podcast. So that'll oh, be Mike, fun. what are you planning? Where do you want to go? I just want to spend time. I just want to see my parents. You know, I haven't yeah. seen them yeah. properly for like a year. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing my mom. I'm seeing her tomorrow. And then I'm going to go and see my dad nice. uh, and catch up with him as well. And then just, just go and hang out uh, with friends, grab a coffee together, socially distance, of course, still. Oh, but yeah. at least we're actually able to do it. And the shops are open here in the UK. Mm -hmm. So I just want to take Lucky the guys. opportunity while we can. Yeah, obviously, Rowdy's hey. not in the same situation. You know, he's just gone no, back into or... lockdown in Canada. So I was expecting sucks. you to say, I want to go to the London dungeon with my family. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not traveling anywhere. Oh, okay. We're just going and we're just seeing each other, okay, which is okay. great. Yeah. That's good stuff. That's good. So. I'd like to see you guys again, honestly. I mean, honestly, like a oh, big group yeah. bear hug, you know? Come on, guys. We're very we gotta... close, though. I mean, if we're Mike there. would make a boat, he could get to me if he wants to. But that, we're not allowed to travel right now. That's <laughs> no. the only problem. No, but it's like off, to... off record, you know? Oh, we're like, just get a dinghy? Yeah, like like swim across the channel? Sticks, uh, with yeah. some duct tape nice. and uh, bam. Go well. But yeah, like totally... Some raft experience. So. Totally miss me meeting up with you guys at events, you know. Oh, it's been so a long time. Fun. We got to do an, an a, a real life podcast soon, sometime. Oh, I love those. We, we, oh, we made like uh, three, I think. We yeah. made one at PAX, we did one at Connect, uh, and we did another one yeah, at Connect. So those bad. are amazing. Those are amazing. Yeah. 
people are worried that we're never going to come back. Well, we will come back. We will come back. Yeah. We're, 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 like the <laughs> famous <laughs> last words, Mike. This is the best way to wind it up. Just leave them with tension. Yeah. The suspense. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll just keep. Oh, the suspense. Yeah. But the thing is, we're so deep into the show now. We can't just quit. It's That's not that easy. Okay. Yeah. Even if you, if you want us to quit, it, it's not. It's not going to be that easy. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll keep you posted anyway. So. Have a great time without us. We'll be back at some point bringing you the uh, the freshest VR news roundup of the week. And uh, yeah, take care of yourselves. And we'll see you then. Ciao. See you. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>